being at UST, I think it's just been really, or I've had a lot of opportunities to give back to the community. And like, I think that all stems from just that, like what I was mentioning before, just like being able to do everything that I can in order to like make my parents proud and also just to like give back to the community in any way that I can. Cause I freaking love USC, go Celts. <laughs> um. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Bold. My name's Isabel, and in this episode of Bold, we talked to Christelle Lagomissa, a University of St. Thomas junior who studies psychology and was born in the Philippines. We talk about her cultural identity and also her University of St. Thomas experience and how she gives back to her community through positions like the RSO chair. But before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and YouTube at Max Studio UST to stay in the loop and get a behind the scenes sneak peek at everything that we're working on. Now, let's jump into this episode of Bold with Christelle. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Have you met anyone else with your name? Um, no. Christelle? Christelle. Christelle. Yeah, no. no. Not the crystals, but not Christelle. That's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. You're it's so not right. the same. It's not the same. People will call you Crystal and that bothers me. It shouldn't bother you. It does though, because your well, name's Christelle. Oh my gosh, Isabel. Okay, Isabel wants me to talk about the story of how I didn't know my name when I was um, like growing up. Okay, let me explain. Um, so growing up, um, my family calls me by CJ, which is um, abbreviation for my first and middle name. So Crystal Joan, Christelle Joan. Um, you, why are you messing up your own name? What? No, because whenever I talk about... Listen, whenever I talk about myself from like my nickname, I always revert back to Crystal. Let me explain. Let me explain. Okay. Okay. So whenever I was growing up, I was always called CJ, right? And so when I went to school for like the first day, I had my name like on the desk or wherever I was at and it was my full name spelt out and I'd never seen it before. So I was like, like, what do I do? I like there, she's calling roll and like she asked for all of us to introduce ourselves and all that stuff. And so I looked at my name and I was like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I don't, I don't know what to say, but it looked like something that I seen before, like crystal. And so I was like, okay, this is just what I'm going to go with because I'm nervous. And I, this is the first day of school. I'm not going to embarrass myself saying, I don't know my name. So I was like, my name is Crystal. And then I went back home and I was like, Ma, how do I say my name? And she's like, it's Christelle. And then I was like, I'm not going to go back to my class and just like, you know, tell them my name is actually Christelle. Cause that's really embarrassing. And so ever since that first day of school, like my first day of school ever, I like just stuck with Crystal until USD. So, yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> but then like coming here, I had to like, or, okay. Shandiz is actually one of the main people that got me into like correctly saying my name by Christelle because I was like, I don't know. I was like walking, um, around, I guess, the student activities office and Max, our old campus ministry, minister was there. And basically he was like, he knew before that conversation, but he was like, Christelle, come tell me why your name is Christelle. And she was like, Christelle? I thought it was Crystal all this time. And so I basically explained that story to them. And then uh -huh. ever since, Shanti's was like, okay, you need to go by Christelle because that's how you actually say your name. I was like, I don't really care. But she was like, no, your mother gave you that name. You need to say Christelle. And then ever since then, I guess Christelle is, yeah. Is your name. Is, well, it actually is <laughs> correctly my name, but yeah. I agree with Shundiz. I think it's important to be able to like, that is your name and you should go by. Yeah, I that. guess that's true. Do people call you like Isabella or like? Yeah. Do you like Isa? Or like, yeah, but there's other Isas that has taken it. So I'm just stuck by Isabel. But yeah. yeah. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about you. Okay. Give us a little intro. Okay. Um, hey. <laughs> Hey. My name's Christelle. Um, I'm a junior psychology major on the pre-PA track. Pre-PA yeah. track. Yeah, nice. Pre yeah. Cool. Um, and tell me a little bit where you're from. Where I'm from? Yes. I'm originally from Baytown, Texas, but I was born in the Philippines. Nice. Yeah. Traveled when I was like two years old, I think, in the airplane with my baby brother. So my mom actually came over with like me, a two-year-old, and then my brother like in her <gasps> arms. I Yeah. She tells me stories of how like she couldn't sleep at all. And I was like, sorry, I can't like, I, I'm, I say sorry, but I couldn't really do anything about it. Cause I was only two, but yeah. You're that's a poor crazy. mom. I know. Yeah. And my Damn. dad was already over here, like in America before my mom came over. So she had like do all like the airport stuff by herself and all that. Yeah. It, it was really difficult, I think for both of them, but we're here now. So yeah. yeah. Good. Um, so you were two, do you remember living in the Philippines? I don't remember living in the Philippines really. I, I mean, my parents have pictures of me and all that uh -huh. stuff when I was like a little baby, but 
Yeah. They would tell me, though, that I could, like, speak a little bit of um, Ilongo, which is the dialect um, from where I'm from in the Philippines. Not um, Tagalog? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Interesting. Not, well, because I'm from uh, Bacolod City, which is where my mom is originally from. That's where my family was before we moved to America. And so the main dialect there is Ilongo, not Tagalog. But yeah, so like I was actually speaking like a little bit before I could speak English, but I freaking lost that. And so now I'm like, like at family functions and they're all speaking in their uh-huh. dialect and stuff like that. And I'm just like, okay. And they're like, oh, can you, can you like speak your language, uh, speak Ilongo? And I'm just like, no, <laughs> it's so sad, but I mean. Wait, at so at home you speak English? Yeah. Well, my parents speak to me in Ilongo, okay. so we'll just, which is good because I can still understand a little bit of it. But since I'm not home a lot nowadays because of college, I'm like losing un- my understanding. So I go back and like my parents are just like, like speaking to me. I'm like, can you like repeat that slower? And then it's like <laughs> they have to like end up speaking in English because I don't understand um, Ilongo that much anymore, which is really sad. I should let. Oh, OK. I learned. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yes. Um, sorry. So like whenever like I was younger, I would watch like um, Filipino shows and stuff like that. So that's how I like understood it better. I should go back to doing that. You should. Yeah. That's a good I, like, that's jumped a good because tip. I was like, oh my gosh, I like that's totally a good remember. Tip. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um so is your Filipino culture important to you? I would say so. Like yeah. because I'm not around it as much anymore, I still try to like make it an important part of my life to just like keep like talking about like like, you know, being Filipino, I guess, or just like going to things that like help me remember my culture in some ways. Um, But yeah, I would like to say that it's important or I try to make it an important thing in my life. Yeah, exactly. I feel that too. So I was born in Mexico, right? Uh And I moved here when I was six years old. So I still remember like living in Mexico and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. And like kind of similar to you, but like my name. So my name's Isabel oh, Garcia yeah. Garza, mm. two last names. Yeah. Garcia is like my last name, right? It's like mm-hmm. my dad's name and my mom's name. And like, so when I came here and like, same thing, like in kindergarten, they're like, what's your name? I'm like, oh, I'm Isabel Garcia Garza. And they're like, so Garcia is your middle name? I was like, no, cause I don't have a middle yeah. name. And so like now, so I had to drop the Garza cause then like yeah, it cause just confuses confusing. people. Yeah. And so now I'm like, Isabel Garcia. Yeah. Which That's is great. Yeah, yeah. You have to kind so of like, like accommodate like, almost. Exactly. Yeah. I guess that's assimilate, kind of like, but assimilate. Yeah, that's true. How do you feel about that assimilation? <laughs> <laughs> or like, yeah, like you <laughs> having to like kind of lose a little bit of, of your culture to kind of fit in. Well, I guess like when I was younger, it was more something that I was like okay with doing, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Because of like you know when you're growing up and like you know elementary and like middle school, middle school especially, I feel like because that's whenever people really start being concerned about like social like um, yeah. status I guess guess if that makes sense um but I like nowadays I really just I kind of try not to like be so like hesitant about talking about like my culture and stuff like that because it's like you should be proud of that it's that that's like where you're from like I was literally born there like I more relate or identify myself like as a Filipino rather than an American if that makes sense Good. just because like I should be proud of like where I was born where I came from and like I went back to the Philippines like um, a few summers ago before like COVID obviously and stuff like that. Um, but that really was an eye opener to like how vast our culture really is. And just like the differences like over there rather than here. And it was just, I don't know, like that made me like really proud of like where I came from and just like the memories that I have attached to, you know, like being back, being back home really. Um, so I guess like assimilation was something that I used to like, like, do I guess, but nowadays it's more so just like being more open to like talking about my culture or just like being more open to learning more and all that stuff. Like I like see on Instagram sometimes cause I follow USC FSA and sometimes like the recommended would be like other like Filipino student associations and they like have like social media bits of like um, learning more about our culture and all that stuff. And it's like really nice to just see like just how crazy it is, you know? Yeah. Or how much we have to learn about you know, ourselves. Dude, I guess. That's yeah. so interesting. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Wait, let's talk about you going back to the Philippines. How okay. was that? You said it felt like home. Yeah. How- well, I mean, most of my family is like there still. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like a lot of my dad's side and my mom's side are still over there and I was able to like meet both of the sides of the family and all that stuff. And like, I got to see where my parents grew up, which was really, oh, really wow. cool. And so like going back, I got to see like the pig farms that my family like tends to. And then they showed me like plots of land where they could, like, they were going to stay at if they didn't move to America. And it was like, oh, this is like our plan of like our houses and all that stuff. And I was like, holy crap, like this is like, you know, like this is, could have been like where I was living at, you know? And I got to meet all my cousins and all that stuff. And we went to like 
different parts of the Philippines. So obviously I went back to where my parents were from, like their hometowns. But then we also went to like this waterfall. I think Magaso Falls is what it was called. And so I got to like swim like in the waterfall like wow. area and all that stuff. And we like hiked up to get to the waterfall. And it was just like, it was like surreal because I had never like seen things like that. And I don't know, it was just really cool to be able to like just go back and like, you know, just to like be where I, yeah, my parents grew up oh, on that stuff. Oh, that's so beautiful. Um, yeah. So let's talk about, so you went back and you like, this is my life. This could have been my life now. Yeah, yeah. How does that like impact how you live now? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I well, think about that all the time. Yeah, like if yeah. I, if my parents never moved to the United States, mm. like living in Mexico, and I'm so thankful that they did, but yeah. let's talk about your experience. Yeah. Cause okay. Well, obviously the Philippines is a third world country and like it's still developing all that stuff. So there's a lot of... Where my parents are from, it's not the most, like, um, developed area. They, like, they live in poverty, but it's not like we're in, like, the worst parts of the impoverished places in the Philippines. Um, so, but just thinking about, like, how, how they had to live back then. Because my dad would always, you know, like, bring that up. Like, oh, you're so lucky that you live in America and all that stuff. And before going back to the Philippines, it's like, oh, whatever. Like, you're probably just, like, over-exaggerating to scare me to get to do better uh -huh. my classes or something. I don't know. But, like, when I went back to the Philippines, it really, like kind of made me realize that this is like how difficult it was to live there. Like my dad told me like they would have to like cut wood every single like morning, like really early in the morning so that they had like um, something to warm up like the stove or something like that so that they could cook and all that. Um, but just like going back really made me realize just how lucky I guess that we're here, like that I'm here being able to like have these opportunities and all that stuff um, and not having to live like, I guess how my parents lived in the Philippines. And I think that's just like, I don't know, like it, makes you really, really grateful. And like going back, it was just kind of like an eye opener because you just kind of see where my parents were living versus like how our houses are here and like the, in America and all that stuff. And just, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. no, um, do you ever, oh, it's kind of deep. Do you ever feel kind of like guilty or like, like not yeah. guilty, but like pressured? Cause I definitely feel like that. I was like, I have, there's this really good quote by Robert from Shark Tank. He was like, I <laughs> am successful in order to justify my parents' sacrifice. Oh yeah. Dang. Wait, Shark Tale, isn't that like a Shark like Tank? A shark. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Christelle. I heard Shark Tale. I was like, shark oh, tank. that's like a children's Oh, okay. no. Like, really the <laughs> like the entrepreneur show. I remember now. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Can you believe this? <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Um, no, that's like, that's really, really good. I didn't realize how much sacrifice my parents had to give in order for us to come here and all that stuff. Because mm -hmm. when we were younger, like, my parents really never told us stories about, like, the Philippines. They were just like, it was really hard and all that stuff. And they never were, like, detailed. But now that I'm older, they're more open to talking about it. And it's kind of just like, their stories were so much harder than I ever like realized if that makes sense. And so like, obviously it's like, I feel really guilty that like my parents had to um, sacrifice so much in order to come to America. And like, they had to leave like all their family. Like my mom always talks about like, I really miss like my, my mom and then my mm -hmm. dad and then her sister, like she's really close to her sister, but she can't like be with them because of like the sacrifice she made for our family and all that stuff. And my dad too, like he has, I don't even know how many brothers and sisters, I think total, they were like 11 or 12 or something. Well, I don't know. And they have like families of their own. So like he has nephews and nieces that they, he can't even see. And it's just like, like being or understanding like that sacrifice just makes me feel like guilty because they had to do that. But also it gives me like motivation to like try my best or like to just like do whatever I can um, in order for them to just like, I don't know, like, to say like, oh, this wasn't just because of like, whatever, like I'm doing this because my child is having the opportunities that I wanted to be able to have and like all that stuff. So um, if anything, like I feel bad because they had to like leave all of that stuff, like leave their entire lives behind. But also it's a good thing for me to use as motivation to just like keep pushing forward, even in difficult times and just like remembering like everything that my parents had to do. So that's yeah. beautiful. That's a good way of putting it. Um, mm -hmm. And that kind of brings us into now and mm -hmm. you at USC, let's talk about kind of like what you're doing with that um, opportunities. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, like being at UST, I think it's just been really, or I've had a lot of opportunities to give back to the community. And like, I think that all stems from just that, like what I was mentioning before, just like being able to do everything that I can in order to like make my parents proud. And also just to like give back to the community in any way that I can. Cause I freaking love USC. Go Celts. <laughs> um, <laughs> like coming here, 
like coming to USD or like choosing a college, I knew that USD was like the best school for me because it was like so deeply rooted in our Catholic identity and also just the community that we have here. Um, that really like like was something that I was looking for in a college. Um, but all the things that I'm doing at UST um, all stem from, I guess, like that whole thing where it's just like I know that I have like all these opportunities. I need to take them and do what I will with them because of like everything that I guess like we were talking about before, just like understanding like I wouldn't have had this opportunity if I was back in the Philippines and my parents didn't like do all of this stuff. So, um, yeah, I think. Yeah. 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 What are some things that you're doing now? Tell oh, us. OK. I know you're doing a lot, but. I'm doing a lot. Um, am I doing a lot? It's like, that's not that much. Um, so right now I am RSO chair, um, the registered student organizations chair. Um, nice. And then I am currently the co-tailgate chair of homecoming, which is really fun. Um, and then I'm also part of a household, uh, Sisters of Aquinas and one of the household leaders. Shout out Jade and Excel. Love y'all. Um, <laughs> um, what else am I doing? Oh, I'm a presidential ambassador. Um, and then I also am a part of volleyball club like the intramural team. So. Whoa, yeah. that's so fun. Mm -hmm. Cool. And so um, I know you kind of talked about this, but I want you to go into like how what you're being involved is like you're giving back to your community. Yeah. Um, coming to UST, I like promised myself that I would do anything just to make like USC a tad bit better and like to, to help like those who are coming in and just like, um, I don't know, just like making UST a good community so that we can share it with like the rest of the people that are coming into um to the school and all that stuff. And so I think that's like a big driving force into like why I do all this stuff. And also just like, um, just like being able to to provide for the campus that like has given me so much already. Um, I think because I'm here at UST, it's been able, I've been able to grow like so much. Um, I don't think I would have grown the same way if I was at like any other college. Um, just like intellectually, spiritually, personally, it's like all that stuff I was able to do because I was here and just like to meet or like meeting um, different people and all that stuff, especially here. The people here at USC are like, I don't think I, they're just like so, so nice. cool. Yeah, so like I don't think I've ever, I will ever meet the same type of people if not for like coming here and all that stuff. Yeah, um, the nicest place in Montrose, I guess. <laughs> facts. Yeah. Um, okay, now what's, what's next for you? I hope to keep doing um, anything involvement related. Like I want to keep like giving back obviously and doing student leadership stuff, even if it's not like big roles or whatever, just because I am going into my senior year and having to focus more on like careers and stuff. But hopefully after USC, I'm able to go to PA school and then go through PA school and then become a PA working in maybe a hospital. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, no, but I'm, yeah, I'm really excited to go into that part of my life too, just because like the medical field is something that's so interesting to me. And so it's like, it's helped me too, like being here at UST, being around people that are like-minded, like um, getting that advice from those people and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm really excited. So hopefully PA school after USC. How exciting yeah. for you. I know. That's so that awesome. Crazy? Yeah. Um, thank you so much for being here, yeah, Crystal. Yeah, thank you for so inviting awesome. me. You're so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Stay well, my friends. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. <laughs>